Stanley Park is an example of a large urban park of the 19th century. And this was a phenomenon that was common um, in Canada's largest cities as well as the largest cities in the United States, the landmark park. At the end of the 19th century, this is a period when numerous cities across the continent are growing rapidly um, as a consequence of, of industrialization. And they're growing in sizes that are unprecedented in human history. Thousands, hundreds of thousands, and eventually millions of humans come to live in very small spaces. And in the process, cities across the continent were competing with each other to draw immigrants, business, investment. And parks become part of this. It begins, I suppose, initially in New York uh, with the creation of Central Park. Uh, and the realization that as more and more people were congregating in smaller and smaller spaces, they had less access to open, naturalistic spaces. And so Central Park becomes the prototypical example of how to create natural space within an urban environment to sustain that urban environment, to become the lungs of the city. And Central Park, or Stanley Park, is an example of that in Canada. So at the end of the 19th century, in 1887, the city of Vancouver, just a year into its incorporation as a city, votes to uh, request permission to use this peninsular tip next to its emerging downtown as a nearly 1,000-acre urban park for a city that has maybe a couple of thousand people. But this is the forethought or the thinking of urban development at the end of the 19th century, that if you want to become a substantial city, you need to have that natural space to support it. You need to have those lungs for the city. And Stanley Park is in some ways symptomatic of a broader trend across North America, but in other ways it's a little bit extraordinary. It's not quite like other urban parks. Central Park is very manicured. It's or In its original state in the mid-19th century when it's designated as a park, it's mostly muddy and swampy. Um, hardly any trees, a bunch of people living there, uh, and over time it's developed into a landscaped and manicured park. Stanley Park was a little bit different. It was already a forested peninsula. Um, it had wild or semi-wild qualities to it. And so that park, in terms of its development, shares some traits with the landscape parks like Central Park or Golden Gate Park or Druid Hill um, or Mount Royal. But it also shares characteristics with the national parks that are being created in the Rocky Mountains at the same time. That it's a, a wild space that has to be preserved and protected in its natural pre-urban, pre-colonial state as a representation of what British Columbia was before Europeans arrived. And I thought, as I looked at Stanley Park and compared it to some of the larger wilderness parks in the national park system, that in addition to our ideas about nature changing over time, when it came to parks, I think our ideas were also fundamentally historical. That the reaction to the windstorms in Vancouver in 2006 uh, and the anguish that Vancouverites felt about the destruction of trees in Stanley Park was quite similar to the reaction that heritage communities have to the destruction of buildings. And so this led me down a path of investigating the degree to which our ideas about nature are influenced by our ideas about the past and how much uh, we layer expectations or ideas about the past onto natural environments. That nature is outside of time, it's unchanging, it's something we preserve in the way that we preserve a historic building or a monument. And so a park is something that's preserved and if it's disturbed that preservation has been undermined, that preservation has been despoiled in some way. So I became curious about how we react to natural environments that change not because of what we do, but because of what nature does to itself. And a windstorm was a perfect example. Here is a force of nature that operates beyond the purview of human control, transforms another natural environment, in this case Stanley Park, into something that was unrecognizable. Was it despoiled? Is that environmental destruction if wind destroys a tree? What if beavers started chopping down all the trees in Stanley Park? Has it been environmentally degraded? From an ecological perspective, no. Wind throw is a common uh, aspect of northwest coast forest ecology. Uh, this happens all, all the time, right? But if a tree falls in the forest and it's not Stanley Park, does anyone care? So I think 
what that storm revealed was the degree to which our attachments to that park, and I think our attachments to naturalistic landscapes in other parks in North America, are actually quite rooted in our attachments to the past and heritage, and the perception that the park and parks represent some kind of pre-colonial environment that we kept safe.